Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Gabriel, just on the Fan TV. Back at another video. And uh, the Ravens back in town, man. Uh, Ravens just had their media day uh, yesterday. So we get to see the, pit the players in their uniforms. And we get to see some guys that we haven't seen throughout this offseason so far. But before we get into that, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You guys been killing it. I truly mean that. Thank you so much. Uh, really means a lot that you guys uh, like the videos that I'm putting out. So let's keep uh let's keep doing that, liking the video, subscribing if you're new. Thank you. All right. So Ravens just had a media day. So let's get the first thing uh, off the top. Lamar Jackson was there, um, and that was never a doubt for me. Lamar Jackson has said repeatedly he's committed to the Ravens. He's committed to this team. He said that he can't wait to get back. He's back. He was going to miss voluntary, and now he's here for everything that's mandatory. So I expect him to be here, obviously, for mandatory minicamp, which he's here for now. And that goes into training camp, which I expect him to be there for. Okay? So we can get rid of the narrative that, oh, he wasn't going to show up. He's not committed to the team. Uh, there's a standoff between him and the Ravens. All that can go to the side. But great to see Lamar Jackson's uniform. And you can see that he looks considerably bigger, too. So he, he's, ready. he's ready for his NFL season coming up. Okay? Kyle Fuller. Kyle Fuller is somebody that I've been waiting to see, too. Um... But he's here. He was here in full uniform. Has that number 18 for a cornerback, which is still very weird and odd to look at. Um, but, you know, when the NFL changed their they number system, hey, you know, you everybody can wear anything. So uh, I'm not totally against it. It's just going to take some adjusting to, to get used to seeing 18 at corner. Uh, so I want to talk about two guys with the Achilles injuries. David Ajabo, Tyus Bowser. These guys are moving around looking good, man. For real. No boot, no limp, walking around. I've seen a video of Ojabo and Adafi Owe, who have a great relationship, by the way. Obviously, you know, knowing each other from, like, high school days. Uh, Ojabo's dancing around, practicing his sack celebration. Uh, Bowser is obviously participating in media day, so he's taking pictures. Um, and these guys look good, man. So the Ravens can get these guys back October uh, early November, this outside linebacker room that's a little weak right now, if we're being quite honest, can stabilize itself. Because right now the Ravens have Odafe Owe on one side, and we all expect Odafe to have a big year too. At least we should expect that because he did nothing but have a good year one. Okay, Ravens brought in JPP. Uh, we'll see if they sign him. I didn't want to do a video on the Ravens having a visit with him because usually – when the Ravens have a visit with somebody, they might not end up signing. So I didn't even want to do that. If he signs, I'll for sure do a video on, on JSC Pierre Paul. But um, so he visited the building. Uh, obviously, um, there's Dalen Hayes, there's Jalen Ferguson. These guys are fighting for reps, and also there's uh, Vince Beagle, who's a veteran. Um, you know, lastly with the uh, Dolphins and the Saints throughout his career. So there are some guys there who are <laughs> they're inexperienced. For the most part, I mean, Beagle is, is an experienced player, but they're guys who have to prove it uh, that they can hold down a pass rush. So if Ojabo and Tyus Bowser can get back earlier than expected, but not not rush them, no, definitely don't want to rush them and cause re injury. They can get back earlier than expected, then I'm thumbs up, great for that. So it's good seeing those guys in uniform and, and moving around so well. Um, now let's talk about two guys who's in our running back room, our top two running backs. J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards, two guys, uh, both coming off ACLs, two guys that look, you know, good as well. They're moving around. I didn't really notice a brace on either one. I could be wrong. I had to look at the pictures again. But they're both moving around. Now, obviously, I don't think they're any, in any condition to practice, so I don't expect anything like that. But it seems like, it seems like a lot of the guys that the Ravens needed last year who got hurt are on track to be contributors this year. Um, and on target to be ready by the time the season starts. And that's the important part. Being ready for training camp, being ready for preseason is not what the Ravens are aiming for. It's to be ready for when the regular season starts, get through the year relatively healthy, and have your team fit and firing for the playoffs. That's the goal. And uh, J.K. and Gus, who we haven't seen Gus all offseason, really. So it's good to see that Gus, uh, he looks to be in shape, too. You know, I, I, never, I didn't have any doubts that he would come in out of shape. But it's good to see Gus Edwards ready, looking like he's he's good to go. And um, hopefully we get to see those guys at some point during the training camp phase. 
I don't expect to hear anything from him, obviously now during this uh, mandatory mini camp over this next uh, couple of days. But training camp, if they can get it, if they can come back middle of training camp and do some light work, and then be prepared to go uh, week one. Great. I mean, if they can't, the Ravens have insurance policies. Obviously, Mike Davis. They got Tyler Beatty. Um, so the Ravens have some guys on the team that can carry the load for a couple of weeks if J.K. and Gus still need some time. Okay. Ronnie Stanley. Ronnie Stanley. Speaking of cornerstone players, Ronnie Stanley is one of the most important players on the Ravens. Uh, just due to the position he plays, due to his talent level, everything considered, Ronnie Stanley is a player the Ravens need. Now, he was um, he was also walking around looking good. I saw him first on Marlon Humphrey's Instagram. Because uh, Marlon was <laughs> videoing everybody. Lamar Jackson, Kyle Fuller, Ronnie Stanley. He had the videos of everyone. And, you know, Marlo is a is a character. But anyway, so Ronnie Stanley, he's he was at the media day in full uniform. We haven't seen him in full uniform in a while. Um, he's another guy that I don't expect to practice too much. But just the fact that he's in u- full uniform at the media day, I think he's moving towards uh, where he wants to be. So that's good. Listen, the Ravens have... And Ronnie Stanley, a left tackle who is a all pro level talent. They're, they don't have another all pro level talent guy on this on this uh, offensive line. Now they now they upgraded the offensive line, they solidified it, they did a lot of good moves. But Ronnie Stanley is that guy who holds it together because he's the most talented of the bunch. Now Linderbaum, maybe he gets to that all pro level um, at some point. You know, he's supposed to be a generational center, so. Hopefully he gets to that kind of level at some point. But as of right now, Ronnie Stanley's that guy with the with still the highest ceiling to be an all pro player on the offensive line. So we need Ronnie Stanley. Okay. So lastly, a player who wasn't there and a player who's having a, a interesting offseason, to say the least. Uh Derek Wolf. So I, t- I did a, a video talking about, you know, Ravens and what the fans do, what the fans want to see, part three. And I spoke about Derek Wolf. And in that video, I said, is he still a Raven? Now, uh, James and Hensley put out a tweet saying that Derek Wolf's um, contract is fully guaranteed for $2 million. So the post-June 1 cut doesn't really matter for him because his contract is fully guaranteed. He would just create dead cap. Now, the interesting thing is he just had his second hip surgery, right? Why would you wait until now to have your second hip surgery, okay? But what's even more interesting is the, the quote from his IG, which is, we're going to try to get a full recovery here and try to live a normal life. Now, I want players to live a normal life, obviously. There is so much going on outside of being a football player in the NFL. And these guys, the average NFL career is three seasons. So when your time is up in the NFL, you want to have to live the rest of your life um, as normal as possible. So him wanting to live a normal life, obviously no issues with that. But we got to talk about the fact that it sounds like he's ready just to go on the Ravens IR for the entire season and then maybe retire next year and not play at all. It's just a really strange situation because he needed hip surgery, right? You knew you needed hip surgery. Why wait until mandatory minicamp starts to get this hip surgery? It's going to be happening several months of recovery. One. Two, there was literally a couple weeks ago uh, a photo of you carrying a bear on your back. If I knew I needed hip surgery... Why am I carrying a 300-pound bear on my back while I'm hunting? Now, he can hunt, live his life, whatever. Hunting is not an activity where, you know, oh, I got hip surgery, I can't hunt. But carrying a bear on your back, I would think that would be uh, grounds for, um, I don't think I should be doing this because I need surgery. So the Derek Wolf situation is just so weird. It's like ever since he got hurt, it's like him and the Ravens just haven't been on the same page. So that's why I always wonder, is he actually a Raven? Now, I think that he will obviously be on the roster, taking up an IR spot, just because cutting him does nothing. But um, he's just kind of like a player who's there. It's, 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 really one of the, it's really one of the most strange situations I've really seen as a Ravens fan. This guy, like, the disconnect between Derek Wolf and the Ravens medical staff is just something that, and, that's, and, this, and Derek Wolf and the Ravens coaches is just something that I really haven't seen before, honestly. And um, I really don't know what to think about it. So maybe he comes back and he plays, but I'm thinking that he's cool with taking his $2 million salary and, you know, that's it. Maybe next year he retires. I don't know. But um, 
yeah, that's that's the Derek Wolf drama. But uh, the most important part is the Ravens are back. Um, mandatory mini camp starts uh, today in a couple hours. And, you know, we'll see the guys on the field. We'll see some videos. We'll see Lamar Jackson on the field. Maybe we'll get to see him throw a little bit um, as far as the highlights go. Uh, so, yeah, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for seeing that some of these guys who were injured last year look good and look ready to hopefully contribute by the time the season comes around. So, anyway, it's your boy Gabriel. This is the Fan TV. I'm out.